Hello everyone! Welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Kat. I am a freelance knitwear designer and I run my own brand called Naive Knitwear on Instagram. There'll be links below. And today I was just going to talk about everything I made in 2021. So I kind of wanted to make this video and just discuss like what I actually made this year. Not everything will be included because some things aren't out yet, like some things obviously I can't talk about because certain brands like to keep them private. And I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about like what goes into each piece, how they're made, who they're made for, how I found the experience making them and working with people and if I made it for myself, how do I feel about the piece. And also I think it's just going to be really good for me because I feel in like a weird place about my job at the moment, like everything feels very uncertain about next year, not just politically, but also like financially and like I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where I'm going. That's, that's part of the reason my brand is called Naive Knitwear because I feel naive, I feel inexperienced sometimes, even though I've got the skill to, to execute stuff, like just the industry makes me feel confused and the way things are handled make me feel confused and young. So yeah, I'm trying to use this as an opportunity to self-reflect and regroup and address what I enjoyed working on this year and what maybe hasn't been so successful and then hopefully implement those things next year. So if you're interested in what a freelance knitwear designer makes in a year, this video is for you. <laughs> so let's get into it and start with January. I'm gonna do this month by month. So January actually was the start of me going to therapy. I've had therapy for a year and have just completed a year and because I accessed it through a low cost counseling service, I'm no longer in therapy. And alongside my therapy at the beginning, I start to draw self portraits of myself as a child. I'll insert images here <laughs> of everything that I'm talking about. So yeah, I started drawing self portraits of myself as a child, trying to like focus in on the aspects of myself that I was uncomfortable with and the emotions that I could see in the pictures that other people necessarily couldn't. And I loved this series. Um, it really helped me to kind of process how I see myself and how I see myself as a child as well. And I think it was super helpful in like healing and growing as a person. However, I do think with work like this, like, because I started posting them on Instagram, which is fine for some people, and it was fine for me at first, but then it kind of became like, a, oh, I need to post a, a portrait, I need to post an illustration. And it became not about what the work was about anymore. So I think with series like that in future, I'd keep them private. And then once I felt that they were complete, would probably release them on Instagram. So then also in January, I got really into um, mending knitwear. I did a few tutorials, they're on my Instagram, but I started taking mending commissions, which I'm no longer open for because they weren't super popular and they took a lot of time and it just didn't feel like something that I wanted to spend my time on anymore. But I mended this jumper, which was my boyfriend's jumper that he'd had for a really long time. It had really big holes in um, and that was really, nice to see other people kind of respond to that and start doing their own mends as well. So February. So in February I kind of didn't have a load of client work. This year was actually very very quiet at the beginning because due to the pandemic a lot of people didn't want to pay for things, a lot of people were struggling themselves because I work with a lot of smaller brands. So I did a, a bit of self-directed work at the start of the year and I ended up knitting a balaclava because I was starting to get really into like vintage ski wear. I saw a few on Instagram but there weren't that many um, at the start of last year, like compared to now they've really really blown up. And I knitted a white balaclava which everyone seemed to love and then the Endry were kind enough to send me some of their um, darning yarns for mending 
obviously in response to what I'd worked on in January. And I Swiss darned two meters please onto the balaclava, which really transformed it into like a beast of its own. And this was inspired by my pandemic anxiety, the fact that restrictions were starting to look like they were gonna loosen up. I didn't want to be social. I didn't want to be near people. I felt very, very anxious about it. So I just made this nice little piece to reflect that. It was handwritten out by me on a piece of paper, then I put it into Photoshop, then designed it stitch by stitch. Um, and there was a whole stitch plan for the Swiss darning. And then the other piece that I worked on in February was just a hat commission for one of my friends. It looks like this. She sent me a few Pinterest images. We went over colours of yarn I had left over that were surplus from client commissions or from my stash. I made it up with this hat. I'm pretty sure she loves it. She wore it there basically the entire time we went to Paris. So I'm really, really happy that I did that. And I always enjoy working on stuff with friends, but I actually find it a lot more nerve wracking because I'm gonna see them wearing it in future and there's always something that you think oh i could have done that or i could have just changed this or i could have just done this t a tiny bit better and it makes me nervous when i'm doing my friend's stuff because i know i'll see all that stuff in future and i know i'm gonna be like oh like, i wish i'd just sewn that seam slightly differently or i wish i'd just done less stitches here but yeah she loves it so in March, I had some work from a student. So occasionally I work with students from universities. It's normally fashion students who would like to incorporate knitwear into their graduate collection, but they don't necessarily have the skills or time to knit it themselves. So I charge a reduced student rate and uh, develop the piece with them and then manufacture the piece because it'll just be a one-off. So I worked with Sophie Wilkinson Cooper her graduate collection was about her hometown of Grimsby and the ability to move around from your hometown and feeling stifled and also being proud of your heritage. Like these were all things that were like wrapped up in the collection. And we really focused in on um, the Grimsby town football team. We used their football kit as an inspiration to make a scarf. And then another piece that I'll talk about later on. This is the scarf. It was displayed at Graduate Fashion Week and we worked really closely on it with each other. The scarf is made from organic cotton that is plated on a knitting machine and is just a wrapped rib. So it's, not a it's not a super complex stitch, however, the pattern of the stripes, because it's plated and then I'm also changing stripe color, it, it took a while. It was one of those pieces that was very repetitive and very like, laborious but once it was done it was really rewarding and it got featured at graduate fashion week which was really lovely and she was super happy with it so that's the scarf and then in april this didn't actually get manufactured this year 2021 however i wasn't allowed to talk about it until 2021 so i've just put it in here because this is when it got released i um made this jumper for patrick mcdowell it was for his Catholic fairy tales collection, which looks at the Catholic church through a queer lens. And, and we spoke about specifically reimagining the Swiss Guard uniform in knit. The yarn was provided by Wool and the Gang, who were the yarn sponsors for the collection. And it is kid mohair yarn, which is super lovely to knit with. I actually knitted it on a knitting machine, which was quite tight, but I have knitted some balaclavas in that since, and it's been okay. It's just one of those ones where you like proper have to like pull the carriage over at the beginning. But this was a challenge because Patrick wanted puff sleeves that were curved as well. So I had to knit the sleeves in two panels. Was it two panels or was it, I think it might've been one panel and then I fully fashioned one half and then I fully fashioned the other half and then sewed them together. This was one by Tace for their Attitude magazine cover, which was amazing to see so lovely like really big career highlight so far and Patrick was honestly the most lovely person to work with he has been so respectful of my time my money my craftsmanship 
throughout the entire process of working with him. Like I could not recommend working with Patrick more. And that opportunity literally came from me just offering to intern a day a month, uh, a day a week for him for free in 2020 because I just really wanted to work with him. Like I, when I quit my fast fashion job, I made a list of people I'd really, really like to work with and Patrick was on that list. And I just thought, even if it's an internship, it's a really small brand. It, it's values completely align with me. And that's one of my concessions for doing free work, if I'm going to do free work, it has to completely align with how I feel and be something that's really inspiring to me and really motivating, or I'm just not gonna wanna do the work if it's not paid. So yes, that was the Catholic Fairy Tales jumper for Patrick. And then in May, I again was trying to expand on the repair side of what I was doing. So I had this scarf knocking around in my cupboard for ages. I think it's a Walmart scarf, it's really old. So I bought this piece because um, it had loads of holes in, it was really moth-eaten. And I was like, I can mend that. And it, I really like the colors. So what I did is I took surplus yarns from my yarn stash and just darned it like really randomly, like in lots of different colors. And it really like rejuvenated the scarf and like added a completely different dimension to it. I still have it in my wardrobe. Um, I am planning on pulling it out this, this Christmas and winter. And this is when I started getting into the idea that you can repair an old vintage piece or rejuvenate an old vintage piece, which becomes very, <laughs> very key to my brand values later um, and give it new value and give it new life and give it new purchasability. Oh, oh I just spilled tea on my leg. <laughs> it was in May as well that I finished the second garment that Sophie Wilkinson Cooper asked me to make. We worked on a v-neck t-shirt that was based on a football shirt but obviously made from knit so it kind of took the fabrication into a different level. I really think that the mixture of old traditional craft and a traditionally feminine way of working, knitwear was very female dominated and still is obviously. Uh, mixing that with a very traditionally masculine sport, such as football, um, but also then respecting the tradition of knitted football scarves and all those kind of interesting facets of it. I think that's such an interesting take on a knit t-shirt and I really loved working on this piece. Again, featured at Graduate Fashion Week. It was so lovely to see Sophie's pieces coming down the runway. I'm super happy for her. And I know that I do have some more students lined up for this year, this coming year in 2022. Um, and I love working with students because they're so much more free with how they approach the knit and they allow for so much more collaboration and interpretation of what I think is gonna work best. A lot of clients can be a bit micromanagey and a bit, resistant to for you to have your input sometimes whereas students always 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 love to like give you a lot of leeway so yeah i love working with students so in june i finished the waist knot cardigan which is a pattern written by the Endry and the Knit Edit, who are both amazing people. If you don't follow their Instagrams, they will be linked below. I'll link everybody's Instagrams below, actually, that I've been talking about here. But they're the loveliest people. That Endry is super sustainable. The Knit Edit is always on point. Like, she always has good knit chat. And I knitted the waist knot cardigan pattern from an old yarn stash that I had and from old surplus yarns that my grandma had left when she passed away and other family friends that, that took up knitting and then didn't know whether to carry it on or not. They just kind of gave me the excess yarns and then I made this lovely cardigan with it. So again, that started my affi affinity for using scraps and waste and it's always been part of my practice, but that really proved to me that like a whole garment can just be made from scraps and it can look 
beautiful. And this is also um, where I built on the polymer clay buttons that I already had featured in the cloud busting cardigan. I also included them in this cardigan and their tiny smiley faces. It's also where I really got into making TikToks because I started to make TikToks about these buttons. And then I realized like the algorithm loves a TikTok. Yeah, I now try and incorporate that a lot more into my page. I've been really shit at it recently, which is probably why my engagement is terrible. But I'm trying to not be too harsh on myself. I'm trying to just take a break, trying to regroup before the new year, and then hopefully have lots of ridiculous TikToks to share with you. So that's the first half of the year. As I said, the first half of the year was super quiet. Like, not a lot was going on at all. I was actually really stressed. I almost got a part-time job because I thought I'm not going to be able to live on this amount of money and I'm not entitled to any um, government benefit in the COVID support scheme because my boyfriend has a job and he earns over the threshold for us to claim. Living in London, that's a big danger zone. So luckily in July, things start to pick up and it was a lot lot easier for me to get work and i'm really hoping that that's not the case again this year i know i do already have a few jobs lined up for january but it's just scary when there's no help for you and it feels like your industry is kind of shutting down because everything's so unsure so if you're going through the same thing i am so sorry i know how shit it is yes july Looking a lot more positive in July. So I started working on production for Ashley Williams. This was through the production designer for Ashley Williams. She contacted me and asked if I would like to assist because they've got a lot of orders. So I started by knitting the base for these white cardigans. So I would knit panels, just hand them over, and then they would get shipped to a factory where they would get linked together and embroidered, I believe. That could be wrong. But it was super nice working with the team because I got to see lots of people and as a freelancer, I normally sat alone all day <laughs> all behind my Instagram screen being like, somebody message me. <laughs> and this was really nice because I kind of got to go into the studio, meet a few of the other people that were making garments. The woman that I was working with was super organized, super friendly, like so amazing at knitting and amazing at writing knitting patterns. Like, and I've, taken a lot of what she had in her patterns and applied it to my own now. And it's so much easier for me to read and understand what I've written down. So yeah, I started off with these cord cardigans. <laughs> so I started off with the cardigans and then later on, like moved on to knitting hats. That was just my part of the production. I know there was a lot of people working on this, a lot of interns, a lot of CSM students. It really does take a village <laughs> sometimes. And I also worked with Georgia Trocopoulos. I think that I've definitely butchered that name. I am so sorry if I have, I my pronunciation is terrible. So I contacted him, I keep spilling my tea everywhere. So I contacted him on Instagram because he was looking for someone to do, to produce a few fabric panels for him. I knitted three or four panels for him. And then one of them actually ended up getting featured on my Cyrus, which was, really amazing um when the notification came through and i saw the post i was like what <laughs> so that was a real like what the hell is happening this is crazy moment i didn't design the dress but i did knit the fabric for that piece and that was really amazing and rewarding so moving on to september september was actually when i started my youtube channel so like we're not very old at all. Like I keep thinking, oh my God, I've had it for ages. It's only been like, what, four or five months? Like not long, but I'm really glad I did. Like I feel like when Instagram pissing me off and getting me down, I just come on here and like make a video and try and get my head straight. And that's what exactly what I'm trying to do now because <laughs> I've fallen out with Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, I love making YouTube videos. I find the editing process really fun. They're really rewarding because they don't take that much time to film, but they feel like I'm able to pack so much information into that time that I, I just really enjoy making them. If you're enjoying it too, like and subscribe. <laughs> Sorry to be a cliche. I also started working with a new client called Priya Farazane in September and um, I knitted them some vests. 
and it was a really quick turnaround, but we got there. The team were really helpful. So they basically wanted me to take a print that they had and turn it into a punch card, which I think turned out really, really nice. We used Yeoman Yarns and it was really nice to meet loads of members of the team and work with them really closely. So yeah, I think we'll be working together again in 2022. In September, I also worked with an artist called Tanico and he works with very tactile materials and he wanted some long panels knitting to be like rolled up and then used as I think they're like they like hang on pieces of wood I'll insert a picture <laughs> so basically I was just knitting really long fat pieces of fabric for that which was really fun um and also meant to picking that up in January as well so then October is really where my Instagram starts kicking off I'm now at 10.7k followers I think which grew from 1300 in about four months that's crazy to me um I feel like that fast growth isn't very normal and uh it's still something that I kind of am struggling to navigate because the growth has very much slowed down now which is normal is a normal part of Instagram don't panic if that's happening to you I'm trying not to panic. <laughs> but basically it all started going crazy when I made the secondhand September jumper, which there's a full video on how I made it on this channel. It's by far the most popular piece I've ever made. It's now sold, unfortunately, but I do have other embroidered jumpers available on my shop. But the idea just came about from the Oxfam Secondhand September Challenge and I had some leftover dye and leftover yarn and I was like, what can I do to this jumper that I've bought from a secondhand charity shop to give it a new life and a new personality? So I ended up going to the charity shop, photographing items that I found there making illustrations of them, translating them onto the jumper. All in all, it took me 60 plus hours. Like it was a long process, but I love it. Like it's definitely my favorite piece of this year. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of all the messaging behind it. And I'm super proud that people loved it so much. Like people just saying they like your art and like validating you like that is so, amazing to feel like that and it is really difficult if you make something afterwards and it's not received quite the same that is that is a big struggle for artists and designers but it's just part of the job and I need to recent and remember that a lot of the time I think so because of the influx of people on my page I got a lot of comments on older posts and a really popular one was the two meters please balaclava so i decided to make some more balaclavas and do a giveaway this month so i gave away a pink mohair balaclava it's the same yarn i used to knit the uh, patrick mcdowell catholic fairy tales jumper so in november i also had some more client work this is my life's last client work of the year I worked with a brand called Too Good. They wanted some samples of hats and gloves and they were just hand knit. They were pretty simple. They just took a while because they didn't have a pattern or any samples to show me. So I just had to work all that out and then sent them to them. And they were really happy with them. So that's really good. They were for salesman samples to show buyers for orders and before you get it manufactured in a factory and all kind of things like that. So. That was really lovely. I really enjoyed working with that team. In November, I also launched my Christmas cards, which I was super excited about launching. I was like, these are gonna sell out. These are amazing. Like I sent them to all my friends because I really, really like them. Flop, Floposaurus. Like this is something that I find really difficult to come to terms with, but it's okay if people don't like certain products and the Christmas cards really were an example of that. But yeah, I just, I think maybe creepy elves and Santas weren't everyone's vibe this year. I will be saving them for next year and I probably will put them back up on the shop, but it was a little bit heartbreaking to me that they weren't this like smash hit success that I thought they were gonna be because I love them a lot, but that's okay. We all live and we learn and, and, and that's a normal part of being freelance. It's a normal part of selling product. Like, and, and I think it's really important for me to say that because I'm so tempted to just be like, they were fine. Like I sold a fine amount, like, but that's not real. And I think the problem with Instagram is people do that 
far too much and there's a lack of transparency which makes us have unrealistic expectations like oh my Christmas cards are going to sell out so I'm sharing my failures with you as well as my achievements because it's important to remember that everybody is human and everyone has bad days and bad sales of certain products that you might be super happy with but everybody else sees clearly something else in them so so November was also when I released this jumper which is the Sid the Squid jumper as you can see his tentacles go all the way down there and the Ralph the Cat jumper which are still available on my shop actually and this was as a response to a lot of people asking oh will you have more secondhand September jumpers so this these are like the next generation I guess of those jumpers they're both 100% wool the Ralph Cat vest is obviously Ralph Lauren they're just cute little creepy characters that have been hand embroidered onto knitwear that I found in a second hand shop and I'm trying to revitalise and give a new life with my illustrations and clearly a sense of humour. <laughs> and then as well as these in December I also produced a Christmas jumper with a reindeer on which I also have a video for on this channel actually. I think that might even be my last upload which I just called the Rudolph jumper and that again was in response to the second hand September jumper. I think that one's also still available. And I just really wanted to provide a range of more affordable sweaters because I know the second hand September jumper was very expensive. And I think that that's definitely something that I want to continue into 2022. However, I think what will happen is I'm thinking of reducing my drops to just two drops a year. So I think I'll have one at the start of autumn and one at like mid to the end of November and they'll be my only drops of the whole year. So what I'll just do at the start of next year is just prep and prep and prep for those drops. And then you'll have two opportunities to buy things that are the only opportunities a year. Because I, I think the frequency of the drops was really difficult for me to handle and like the pressure of like, uploading all the text for the the images of the garments and like finding something witty to say about them like I think it just got a bit much for me so I think keeping the drops as minimal as possible is better for me mental health wise next year and then I finished off December by just making two other balaclavas one was in a cobalt blue which is now sold and one was in a pink just like the giveaway balaclava so they I think the pink one's still available on my shop which will be linked below and I think that's everything for this year. I feel like I've made loads and there's there's a lot more of that behind the scenes that I've not mentioned because it's not released yet or I can't talk about it yet but I'm really proud of what I've done this year and I think it's really helpful to do exercises like this because before I sat down for this I was like oh like nothing's going well, Instagram's bad, like I don't know where my YouTube's going, I don't know where my business is going, like oh this is so annoying and I think at this time of year there's a lot of pressure like hit the ground running in the new year, like start off on a really good foot and like if you don't understand what's even happened the previous year it's difficult to then do that so I think it was really really helpful for me to sit down and reflect on everything that's gone on because it's been actually really mad this year and I think next year is going to be even crazier so if you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing I know it's a cliche thing to say and I will be taking a break up until the new year and then I will be slowly dipping my toes back in the Instagram water and the YouTube water when I feel ready and when I feel prepared to focus on where I want to go in the new year because I really don't know where that is yet so I'm wishing you a healthy happy and safe new year not that I can predict how that's going to go yet but I hope 2022 brings you everything you want and brings me everything I want <laughs> so I'll catch you in the new year bye <laughs>